السلام عليكم ورحمة الله عالميا لعل السرطان هو السبب الرئيسي الثاني للوفاة بعد أمراض القلب والأوعية الدموية فالسرطان مرض معقد يهدد الحياة ويصيب الملايين حول العالم ولا سيما مواطنو جنوب أفريقيا ويعد مشكلة صحية ناشئة وآفة مهلكة حيث يعد سرطان الثدي من أبرز السرطانات لدى النساء ولكن احتمال الإصابة بهذا المرض والوفاة به تختلف اختلافا جذريا بحسب المكان الذي نعيش فيه وفق الخبراء مع البروفيسور محمد إقبال باركر من جنوب أفريقيا رئيس المركز الدولي للهندسة الوراثية والتكنولوجيا الحيوية نتحدث أكثر من الداخل معكم زينب صفار تابعونا عالميا لعل السرطان يعد السبب الرئيسي الثاني للوفاة بعد أمراض القلب والأوعية الدموية ولكن فرص الإصابة به والموت بسببه تختلف اختلافا جذريا بحسب المكان الذي نعيش فيه كما يرى الخبراء وعلى الرغم من انخفاض معدل وفيات السرطان في العديد من الدول خلال العقد الماضي فقد ارتفع في أكثر من خمسين دولة معظمها في أفريقيا جنوب الصحراء الكبرى فالسرطان هو مرض معقد يهدد الحياة ويفتك بمئات الآلاف من الجنوب أفريقيين ويبقى سرطان الرئة وسرطان عنق الرحم وسرطان المريء الأكثر فتكا اليوم ويرى المعنيون أنهما لم يتم إجراء تغييرات جوهرية وتكريس تمويل أكثر فسيتزايد عبء مرض السرطان في جنوب أفريقيا ولن تكون البنية التحتية الصحية والموارد المخصصة قادرة على التعامل معه وكافية لذلك وتكرم جمعية السرطان في جنوب أفريقيا كانسا سنويا رجالا ونساء استثنائيين قدموا إسهامات مميزة في مختلف مجالات البحث السرطاني البروفيسور محمد إقبال باركر أستاذ الكيمياء الحيوية الطبية وعلم الأحياء الهيكلي من كيب تاون في جنوب أفريقيا والمدير السابق للمركز الدولي للهندسة الوراثية والتكنولوجيا الحيوية في جامعة كيب تاون ولجمعية جنوب أفريقيا للكيمياء الحيوية والبيولوجيا الجزئية والذي لديه سجل بحوث متميزة في المنشورات والمجلات الدولية الرئيسية كرم على بحوثه الاستثنائية في هذا المجال ويخبرنا أكثر من الداخل عن إسهامه في هذا المنحى Middle Eastern countries such as Iran and also in China and Latin America. Mm -hmm. um, in men more than in women or in, in both? In, in men more than in women, mm -hmm. about two to one mm -hmm. in men to women. Um, the reason it's more common in men we do not know. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do not know what causes the disease at this moment. Um, It's not like many other cancers where we have a suspicion of what causes a disease. Mm -hmm. So part of our work is to A, determine what are the risk factors for the disease mm -hmm. and B, uh, how we can treat the disease knowing what the risk factors and what the genetic mutations are. Mm -hmm. so, so what we are doing is we are sequencing the DNA of all our patients. We sequence the entire mm -hmm. genome of all our patients. Mm -hmm. And we compare that to the normal healthy tissue and try to identify mutations in the DNA. And from that mutations, we are able to work back and 
identify the possible carcinogen mm -hmm. or the agent that is causing the cancer or the mutation in the DNA. And our work to date has ruled out possibly smoking as one of the contributory factors for this particular cancer. Mm -hmm. Because each cancer is very specific. So in lung cancer, 99% of lung cancers is attributed to smoking. Mm -hmm. um, but is it the real reason, I mean, the smoking? Because there are lots of people who smoke and they are heavy smokers. I'm not defending smokers. But, yeah. but um, when they die, they suffer from other kind of diseases. Yeah, the, the, it's, a, it's a very um, simple answer to that. Yes. It, 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 you see, the diseases we develop is an interaction between the environment Mm -hmm. The environment being what we eat and what we are exposed to, what we breathe in, exactly. and our genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. So in our body, we have systems to detoxify our body of any harmful uh, materials that we are exposed chemi to. Ingredients uh, coming yeah. inside, yes. So, so um, when we consume anything harmful, the Defects, um, the, the protection mechanism kicks in mm -hmm. and it removes the harmful compounds. So um, this is peculiar to every person of his own. It's not it, like it's the same in, in a number uh, of people or the same family or the same line. Mm. Yeah, we, we all have the genes that can do that. Mm. But between you and me, 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of our DNA is identical. Mm. There's a 0.01% that's not identical. identical. Mm. And that 0.01% is something like 3 million base pairs of DNA. Yes. Out of 3 billion. And, and so um, those differences between you and me are what contributes to the ability for you maybe to detoxify your body much better than me. Mm. So the detoxification process is dependent on the individual's genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. So if I smoke a lot and I have a very good detoxification mechanism, I'll be protected. Mm -hmm. But if I do not have a good uh, detoxification mechanism, I'm going to get the disease. Mm -hmm. And so in most people, when you're smoking, you oversaturate the body with to uh, toxins. Toxins, that's true. And in most people, they cannot um, cope with the load. Mm -hmm. And they develop mutations and disease ensues. Um, whereas in uh, some patients, they, they, they can but cope with the load. But can you talk people into not smoking? I mean, smoking is a bad habit, but it's it become something which is, you can not easily give up. Um, Have you ever smoked? No. Not never <laughs> ever? <laughs> never ever. Mm. So <laughs> maybe I'm the wrong person to talk to about giving up smoking. <laughs> yeah. But do you, for example, advise the people that, well, try to get rid of smoking as a habit because it might lead into such kind of... Yeah, uh, uh, what you must bear in mind is that smoking is not only a risk factor for mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. It's also for cardiovascular disease and other diseases. True. Where it is a risk factor. Mm -hmm. So for your overall health, um, it's bad for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, now, sir, the Cancer Association of South Africa, its advocacy team performs a kind of watchdog role, striving to ensure that South African policymakers are influenced with regards to important cancer control issues and patients' right to health care is protected. So it's a kind of integrated holistic effort. To what extent do you believe that uh, the policymakers are interactive vis-à-vis -vis this sensitive ailment? Yeah, Today, uh, 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 recently there has been a lot of improvements. It's not ideal. It's not what we would like to see, mm -hmm. but um, it is an improvement from the past. So, for example, previously, cancer was not a notifiable disease, which means that if somebody dies, um, they 
the health professional is now required to indicate that the ca patient died of cancer and what cancer. Mm -hmm. Previously that was not required. So we now have much more accurate statistics um, how many people actually die of cancer annually in South Africa. Um, in terms of treatment of cancer patients, again there's been an improvement, but not adequate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uh, not sufficient to treat all the patients as quickly as mm -hmm. they should be treated. There's still a long waiting list and you know in cancer you need to be treated immediately. You exactly. cannot wait you six cannot months wait. for treatment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now the Cancer Association also, uh, they have many centers um, that spread, they have at least uh, or even more than 30 centers located in communities throughout South Africa. Do such centers interact with other international centers for exchange of the science and technology experience and research collaboration? Yeah. The, the, the Cancer Association has two major roles that it plays. Mm -hmm. The one is to fund research mm -hmm. in cancer and the second one is community awareness programs to raise awareness um, of cancer, to promote healthy eating habits, etc. Mm -hmm. and, and it also runs cancer hospices mm -hmm. um, where patient, terminally ill patients go more for pallet palliative care mm -hmm. rather than for treatment. Um, so on the research component, the Cancer Association funds uh, roughly about 30 researchers in South Africa at different universities to do cancer research. And uh, all these cancer researchers interact and collaborate Mm -hmm. internationally with other centers mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in their work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Allow us, uh, Dr. Iqbal Parker, to stop now for a short break and then afterwards I'm going to detail more on one of your important research studies and to talk a bit about chemo resistance, but after the break, sir. إذن فاصل قصير ونعود لا تذهب بعيدا. البروفيسور محمد إقبال باركر أستاذ الكيمياء الحيوية الطبية وعلم الأحياء الهيكلي من كيب تاون في جنوب أفريقيا يشير في أحد أبحاثه إلى أنه تستخرج من الثوم مواد مضادة للسرطان حيث يقول جرى استخدام الثوم عبر العصور لمعالجة العدوى وأمراض القلب والسرطان ولكن عبر العصور هل كان فعلا يوجد مرض يدعى السرطان أم كان موجودا بشكل مختلف بيد أنه أصبح اليوم أكثر خبثا Cancer has been there probably for a long time mm -hmm. we, we're not able to say with certainty but um, in the older days cancer largely went undiagnosed people died and they were just assumed that they yeah, died of unknown. poor health, yeah. unknown causes, mm. etc. Um, today people are much more aware of cancer than people were maybe 20 or 30 years ago. And um, also the health authorities are now also, in, if we look at South Africa, 10 years ago the doctors didn't have to specify that you died of cancer when you died. Mm. Um, so most doctors would just put natural causes, mm -hmm. but now the doctors are legally required to say what disease you died of. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, it's more accurately reflected. People speak more openly about cancer. Also previously, cancer was taboo. You didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. If you had cancer, um, in different communities, it was regarded as a bad omen and you don't talk about it. That attitude has changed. Mm -hmm. So people are much more open about it. So certainly it's more about awareness, but 
combined with that is also we cannot escape the fact that there is an increased incidence of the disease. And, and that increased incidence is largely due to our changing lifestyles, mm -hmm. more preservatives in food, mm -hmm. more polluted air we breathe in, and exactly. a combination of other factors. Right. Now, uh, there is something called chemo resistance, which is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality in <coughs> cancer, and it continues to be a challenge in cancer treatment. What does that issue mean, and what leads to it? You know, now, chemo resistance is that sometimes when you treat the cancer, the cancer responds to the, to the chemotherapy or to the anti-cancer drug, mm -hmm. and the patient goes into remission, in other words, is cleared of the cancer, mm -hmm. but a few years later or a few months later, the patient come may come back mm. with a recurrence of the disease. And this time, when you try to treat the patient, the patient no longer responds to the drug. To chemo, yes. Yeah. And that, we believe now, is due to what we call stem cells. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you must have heard yes, about stem, stem cells. cells. Sure. That's a new and emerging area, a very interesting area. And what it is believed now is that when you treat the disease, you treat the bulk of the tumor that you kill, but the, these stem cells survive. Mm -hmm. And after a while, the stem cells re-emerge and they grow new tumors, and this time they are slightly different to the older tumor. That's why and they the, resist the chemotherapy. And they're resistant mm -hmm. to chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So the new drugs should be now aimed at not only killing and shrinking the tumor, but killing the stem cells as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that is now the, the new challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the th novel therapeutic strategies that would inhibit such micro-environmental support to tumor cells and help reduce the chemo resistance and tumor? There are no magic bullets mm -hmm. at the moment or mm -hmm. magic treatment at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're hoping is that we would be able to identify uh, surface on, on, the, on the surface of the, the stem cells specific markers that we can direct drugs to, mm -hmm. to kill the, the stem cells as well. Um, but at the moment, we, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. How much time does uh, such kind that, of that, research that is, take? That is very difficult. You know, mm -hmm. one of the American presidents said that we're going to beat cancer in the next 10 years. Yes. That, that was 50 years ago. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and sure. um, the problem is that with each new discovery, we find that there's another challenge around the corner. Coming around the corner, and, yes. And, 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 um, That's why a lot of people, they worry when they tell them, well, we finished the chemotherapy and you're okay, but you have to come and check in a two month or six month time. That's why most of the people are afraid that, well, it might relapse, the tumor yeah, yeah. might relapse or might not relapse or come back or... Uh, yeah, th th that is one of the realities. And uh, one of the things is to have a careful surveillance mm -hmm. of the patient to make sure because with any cancer, the earlier you treat it, the better. Mm -hmm, the better. And um, so if a cancer is, you know, we, we split it into stage one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. A stage one cancer is very easy to treat. It can usually be cut out and it hasn't spread mm -hmm. to other organs yet. A stage two cancer may have spread a little bit, but it can be treated but the stage three and stage four cancers spread to other organs in the body, mm -hmm. and then it becomes difficult to treat. Yes, yeah. now let's illustrate Dr. Parker on uh, two facets of the cancer that perhaps that attacks children and women, mm -hmm. okay? In children, how to respond to South Africa's childhood cancer challenges? Yeah, that, that, that is, difficult and it's still in the very sort of um, early stages. There, not a lot of work has been done in childhood cancers mm -hmm. in South Africa. Increasingly that's becoming an important area. Mm -hmm. The problem with childhood cancers, it's not 
easy. What are the relevant pediatric uh, cancer issues that have been identified? Well, there are some of the blood cancers, the blood disorders mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. And um, if those are identified early in childhood, mm -hmm. the they usually stage. can be com treated completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of identifying of the, both the parents being aware that something or noting that something has gone wrong mm -hmm. and bringing the, the children in. And obviously with children, it's not always easy to communicate mm -hmm. um, the nature of the disease or that there's a problem or that they're experiencing anything. They may not be able to explain what mm -hmm. is wrong. Mm -hmm. So, but in, in many of the childhood cancers, if they're detected early enough, they can be treated. Uh, what about complete. women? Um, and women, you know, the global statistics indicate that one in eight women are diagnosed with breast cancer, but in the Western Cape, uh, this number is even higher. One in every two women who are tested are diagnosed with breast cancer. As October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month in South Africa, mm -hmm. more light is being shed on this devastating cancer. Uh, yeah, the, that is, the, the, the twofold, the, the problem is twofold. The, the one is that breast cancer was initially perceived as a cancer of um, the affluent, um, mm -hmm. um, very rich diet, mm -hmm. fat-rich diets and, and westernized diets. And um, it was assumed that black women in South Africa do not develop the disease as, mm -hmm. as to the same extent that, that immigrants or European immigrants mm -hmm. to South Africa uh, develop the disease. However, uh, obesity has become a major problem. Sure. Even amongst the black women mm -hmm. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And associated with that, breast cancer has also become a major problem because it's a very tight link between obesity, hormone imbalance, and breast cancer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so it's, it's largely related to diet as well. Um, not necessarily hamburgers and other things, but it's fat-rich diets and mm -hmm. starch-rich diets which leads to accumulation of, of, mm -hmm. of fat. Right, Professor Mohammed Iqbal Parker, Professor of Medical Biochemistry and Structural Biology from Cape Town, South Africa. Many thanks indeed for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. The pleasure is all ours. Many thanks indeed. إذا لقاء جديد في الأسبوع المقبل مع ضيف جديد وقضية جديدة ودائما من الداخل للمزيد من التواصل بريدنا The Inside at Almayadin.net وصفحتنا على الفيسبوك من الداخل من كل فريق عمل البرنامج من كل الميادين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله